Hey guys, it's Destiny, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing the gacha system in Honkai Star Rail, what I personally think about it, and if it's very, I suppose, free-to-play friendly. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. So after being able to get into the Honkai Star Rail beta, really happy about that, by the way, I have looked at the gacha system in Honkai Star Rail, and I'm going to inform you of all the things I know about the gacha system so far, and whether or not it seems really good for the players or not. So for the gacha system, and I've noticed this right away, it is very, very similar to Genshin Impact system. The reason why I say this is because how the character banner works, which is the limited character banner, 90 pulls guarantees a 5-star character. The first drop is 50% to be the promotional character. If it's not the promotional character, the next 5-star drop is going to be the promotional character, which is very, very similar to Genshin Impact. It's literally the exact same number, 50% to get the character, 90 pulls. If you do not get them the first time, you will get them the second 5-star you receive on that banner. And then for the Light Cones, which is the weapon system in the game, 80 pulls guarantees a 5-star Light Cone. The first drop has a 75% chance to be that Light Cone. If it's not the promotional Light Cone, then the next 5-star drop is going to be the promoted Light Cone. Personally, I think this weapon system is definitely better than Genshin's due to the fact that with Genshin, you have to be able to go up to basically three pities to guarantee the weapon since you might get the other promotional weapon on the banner. You never know. But with Genshin, it I just consider it I have to be ready to basically hit three pities to guarantee the weapon. In Honkai Star Rail, it's a bit different. It's 80 pulls to guarantee, which I believe is the exact same as Genshin's with the weapons as well. The next 5 star is 100% going to be the promotional one, which are the light cones in this game. So I personally think that the weapon banner, or the light cone banner rather, is definitely better in comparison. But I would say that is still a lot of pulls regardless of the fact, and the system is quite similar. Additionally, if you are enjoying this video so far and it is helping you out, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And now let's carry on. Now, a lot of you may be wondering, those who do spend or those who don't spend, hypothetically, if you were to buy the packages, what do the packages look like in this game? Is it similar to Genshin pricing? Is it like Honkai pricing? What is it? So on the Apple Store, I was actually able to see this, and I don't think a lot of people realize that on the Apple Store, or even, I believe, the Google Play Store, if you go to Honkai Star Rail and you scroll down, you can see the in-app purchases that are available. And... Not to my surprise, they are the exact same as Genshin prices. And I have no idea, honestly, how to pronounce it, but I'm just going to call them the shards. The shards, which are for 6480 which sounds very familiar, is for $99.99. .99. So basically, it is the exact same pricing. The game also will have an express supply pass, which is, I'm guessing, the monthly. It's $5. So I'm guessing every day you log in, you get that. The shards are basically identical to Genshin. They have a 60, they have a 300, a 980, and so on. It's the exact same, same pricing. And I'm assuming when the game also comes out, we will also have the double purchase available for the first time. So those who do look into spending, that is a thing. Hopefully we do get the double purchase. I'm sure we will though, since it seems like most Toyoverse games do have that. So. That will be a thing. So basically, essentially, for our first limited banner, if someone were to buy the $100 pack, you should be able to guarantee basically hit a pity, since that will be roughly 81 pulls or so, and you'll be just missing around 9 pulls. But either way, you should be able to hit that pity really soon. So that's a benefit in itself for those who do plan to spend. Additionally, in the gacha system, there is also an exchange store. The nice thing about the exchange store is that there are five Star Rail passes, the standard passes and the limited passes. And these passes are the exact same as intertwined fates and the standard fates. And you can get, from what it seems, five per month, just like Genshin. So if you were to look at this gacha system, it is almost identical to Genshin's if I'm being honest with you. You can get those Star Rail passes and you'll be able to basically get those five free passes. Just depending on how much pulls you do, you'll be able to get... The currency, I'm not too sure what the currency is called, but it's basically the same as a Stardust or Star Glitter in Genshin. And then you just exchange it, and there you go. You get those free passes. So, overall, the gacha system, I'm iffy on it. I do like it due to it having the guaranteed with the pities. But the thing I don't really like is I feel like it is a bit expensive. I know it's the same as Genshin's, don't get me wrong. I always thought Genshin was a little pricey, 
but I've noticed throughout playing the beta, the story, that it is a bit difficult to get the Cellar Jade since it seems like per instance you will get roughly around maybe 10 to 50 Cellar Jade. But the thing is, with the pull system, it is the exact same conversion. You need 160 for one pull, which basically equates to 1,600 for a 10 pull. So because of how, in my opinion, how, I guess, time consuming it is to get Stellar Jade, just based on getting it through the story, I feel like players will definitely have to save a lot of their currency in order to basically get these characters they really want. Such as if, let's say, there's a limited banner for, I don't know, Kafka, for example. You would have to prioritize if you want Kafka or if you really want the follow-up character that may be the limited banner after, since it really depends on how much Stellar Jade we will be getting from the story. Just based off the beta, it's not much, I will say that, especially because I did play through some parts of the beta so far. It's really not that much, but I feel like it can be fixed just by, you know, doing events, doing things like that and then the seller jade currency we do get will be a hefty amount or a good amount to where i feel like it's healthy it's enough for players to be able to pull who they want not necessarily maybe like when they want but i still think it'll be good for who they want like let's say you skip a banner or you skip two banners maybe and then you really want that character that does come out i feel like you should have enough or you can possibly hit a pity or maybe even more it just depends overall so when the game comes out it really does depend how they do events how much currency we get and so on because i'm going to be honest after playing the beta and even seeing other people play the beta i can definitely say that characters are going to be really really important in this game the game definitely has a lot of rpg aspects i definitely do believe that the jrpg aspects will definitely outshine the gotcha aspects as i do believe in the game you do need to have strategy in order to defeat certain foes especially the foes that are multiple levels above you which i do heavily appreciate that but i also do need to mention you know you definitely will need characters to deal with this since if an enemy is not weak to what you are using then essentially they have this toughness meter bar which is basically like a defensive sort of thing where if you don't break that bar they take less damage from you which equates to you not possibly being able to beat it or you're just not doing enough damage and it does more damage to you which ultimately makes you lose so overall characters will matter in my opinion the gotcha system is okay i'm just hoping that when we do get the game that we get enough Stellar Jade in order to be able to pull for these characters. And I'm not saying we need every single character at all. You can still make really good teams, even if you have a limited amount of characters. But I will say that I hope that they are a bit generous, especially in the beginning with how many pulls we get in order to possibly get maybe who, you, who we want or possibly even be able to at least build a really nice core team to be able to use throughout the story. The, I will say though, the free to play characters that we do get so far throughout the story are really good. So the free to play options are very nice. So people who are free to play, I wouldn't worry too much. I would just say though, based on how much Stellar Jade we received throughout the beta so far, I would say that if that is the same, you just really have to be smart with your resources in the game. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this video helped out. And of course, if it did, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments down below based on what I've told you about the gotcha system, the pricing of bundles, and so on, how you guys feel about it. And if you guys like it, let me know. If you guys kind of dislike it, also let me know that as well. And I hope you all have a nice one. Peace.